On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, the team flies to Puerto Rico to investigate the iconic El Moro Fortress. Hold on. The corner of my eye, I've seen a shadow pass by. In the tunnels of San Cristobal, the pursuers become the prey. Do you hear that? It sounded like someone was in the tunnel. And Joe rediscovers his native tongue in the Chinese dungeon. What's the matter? I saw something that just went off to the right. Then, GHI plays on the oldest stage in the Americas. Just saw something there. Beyond the balcony? Yeah. Why is it in midair? Where the hell is that coming from? And Scott captures a command performance from the Phantom of Teatro Tapia. Holy what? Something just totally pushed my arm. I'm shaking right now. the sunny side of the world, Puerto Rico. Beautiful beaches and nice and warm. We have a wonderful case coming up. Susie's going to give us a download and let us know what to expect. We're going to investigate the old San Juan Fortress. It's actually two fortresses. The first is called El Moro Fortress, and connected by a mile-long wall is San Cristobal Fortress. But two fortresses. Both are considered to be the Western Hemisphere's best preserved 16th century fortresses. And both of the fortresses have activity. Supposedly, there's an apparition of a soldier fully dressed. Now, voices have been heard throughout this fortress as well. So our client, Debbie, called us to investigate because she really wants to know what's going on because it's pretty much creeping out all the tourists. Okay, folks, the uh, fortress is directly in front of us. Wow. That place is huge. Hey, Hi. Debbie. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to El Morro Fortress. We heard tourists telling us that they've heard footsteps, seen people walking through the walls, breathing on their necks, feeling that somebody's watching them. So we decided to call GHI and ask for help and ask them to please investigate and let us know what's really going on. So now why was the fortress built here? The purpose of the El Morro Fortress is to protect the entrance of the bay. And who in particular were they actually sort of defending themselves from? The British, the Dutch, the French, mm -hmm. and the pirates. Now, we're led to believe that there's some unusual paranormal activity happening. We would love to go to those areas yes, and see it. Yes, we have. I'm um, accompanying me, and me show you, and let's look into this. Great. Where are we off to? A dungeon where people have heard a Chinese prisoner. Hey, watch your steps. There was a dungeon behind us. Yes. This tourist, he heard, Ayúdame, help me. It was a Chinese accent in the 1800s. A Chinese prisoner starved to death. Why were the Chinese held here at the fortress? Well, the Chinese usually came over to work in the construction of the fortresses. Today, the dungeon is used as a theater, and the people who have visited have felt that someone is watching them. So where to next? We're heading to the lighthouse. Behind us, we have the lighthouse. I was walking around, and I was passing through the lighthouse. I go to the front and I see this guy just like in old clothes, like military Spaniard English type of clothes. He's kind of weird because he keeps on walking towards the wall. He's going to crash. So I was about to say something and then the dude kind of went through the wall. So I was like, OK, I have no explanation for this. So I'm just going to walk away. And where are we going to next? We're heading to San Cristobal Fortress. Great, after you. San Cristobal Fortress. This is the largest military fortress built by the Spanish crown in the Western Hemisphere. The oldest part was constructed in 1640. We're heading to the soldiers' barracks. Here we are at the soldiers' barracks. I stood in front of one of the beds and I had a weird feeling, like the hairs in the back of my neck would stand up, like that creepy feeling and I decided to take a picture and some orbs came out right where I was standing. I felt that the orbs were responsible for the hairs behind my neck standing up. 
This is quite the place, Debbie. Oh, yes. This is a spot. We had a lady. Um, gosh, she got so scared. I heard a slight, like, pounding, like walking. When I looked to my right, I saw this shadow. It was like a soldier. And that shadow was walking through the wall. I used to walk around alone, and now I don't. Two fortresses in the one night, that's going to be a big task ahead of us. The teams are going to have to be very, very independent of each other. We do have great distances to cover, and it's going to be difficult for teams to reach each other. But we're really looking forward to getting into this and seeing if we can find some answers. OK, what have we got for camera angles? In this camera here, what we have is the lighthouse, where this witness actually saw a soldier walking through the wall. Mm -hmm. Then what we have here is the dungeon, where there's this report of this Chinese prisoner asking for food. I've actually set up cameras in the St. Cristobal fortress. We've got the tunnels covered, as well as the courtyard. OK, so how about if uh, Susan and I go over to uh, St. Cristobal and check out the tunnels? Great. And uh, let's get the lights out and start this investigation. This is Kristen Barry at the lighthouse outside. We're trying to reach any spirit here, a spirit that has been reported here to walk through this wall. Como te llamas? Me llamo Chris. Se llama Barry. Were you killed here in 1893? Are you able to show yourself to us? We don't want to cause you any harm. And we understand that you're probably guarding the fort still. Hold on. Okay. The corner of my eye, I've seen a shadow pass by. See that? That hole in the wall there beside the door? That's where I seen it move into. We were walking down there, mm -hmm. and I seen it moving into here. Yeah. From a way down from the lighthouse, something caught my eye. It looked like the shadow figure moved smoothly from the ground level into one of the windows that the cannon would have been fired from and was gone. Okay, there's no way anyone could get down there. Oh. And that's locked. Is it? is it our shadows? I don't know. If you walk, walk from up there, maybe it could have been something in the lighthouse, maybe. Stop. And make your way down. No. No. Maybe it was just a trick of the light. Now, what it was possibly could have been a trick of the light. We did try and retrace our steps to see if there was anything that we would reproduce that. We weren't able to do that. OK, this is Paul and Susan. We're in the tunnels here in San Cristobal Fortress. So the report here is this woman walks up here, sees a soldier walking towards her, says to her, oh, where's the reenactment? To which, like, he then stops and walks into the wall. I've got my audio recorder down there. Let's try and sort of see if we can establish who this soldier is. Come on, te llamas. I have the worst Spanish accent ever. <laughs> Mi nombre es Paul. Pablo. Pablo. Mi amigo es Susan. Amiga. Amiga. Necesita ayuda. Make a noise. Right here, right now. Shh, did you hear that? Make yourself known. Make a noise. Right here, right now. Shh, did you hear that? Sorry, I was in the tunnel. Yeah. Like, like a shuffling up there. Is anyone in here? So Susan and I went into the tunnels to uh, investigate the Spanish soldier that had been seen walk through a wall, and then we heard footsteps. I don't like it in this tunnel. Is there someone standing there? Oh, come on, what the... 
there's no one here. hearing what sounded like sort of footsteps or even shuffling going on behind me. Although we chased that down, there was nobody there. What on earth is wrong with this tunnel? What's up? Oh, I feel weak in the knees. I feel like my head's dizzy. Do you want to step outside for a sec? No, I want to see what it is that's making me feel like this. The tunnels have a really strange feel to them. They're making me sick. They're making me dizzy. I kind of felt like I was falling under into like a fainting spell, almost like a trance. In este tiempo, no puedo oírte tu voz. Por favor, ¿cómo te llamas? What was that? Did you see something move back? I sort of ducked behind the wall. Oh, that was weird. That was weird. Because it was like, as if it was like this. And then just went like that. Really? Yeah. As I turned around at one point, something, it almost appeared as though it, it ducked back, um, you know, out, out of view. And it was, it was your light that caught it. There's not something shiny here, is there? Like a shiny mineral in the wall. Because it was more of the light that I saw. There's some calcium deposits, but that's about it. But it was weird. It was like your light hit something here that then sort of ducked away. I wish I would have caught it. I didn't see anything. If there is a soldier here, if there is somebody who understands me, then show yourself, please. Come forward. Donde esta? Estás aquí. Do you still feel the same? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah? OK. My arms are so heavy. Let's head up to the um, rooftop. OK, good. I could get some fresh air out there. Yeah. Well, and I thought it would be a good idea to head out of the tunnels and go investigate uh, our next location. It feels completely different up here, like normal. Yeah. Good. Shortly after that, the whole sensation subsided completely. Joe and Scott, EVP session in the dungeon slash theater. theater. Scott and I were investigating the theater slash dungeon of Elmore Fortress. We're following up on the claims of people hearing voices of a Chinese man. You know, the, the guy was Chinese. Mm -hmm. I can speak a little bit of Chinese. Where do Lao Chin? I heard something like towards the back, but I'm not sure. It just sounded like somebody was moving. My man hung or hang the gong. Mom not why. I would like for you to come sit with us. Madam, I saw something that just went off to the right. We would like for you to come sit with us. Joe and I were investigating this dungeon slash theater at El Moro Fortress. What's the matter? I saw something that just looked like it was formed, and it just went off quickly to the right. I saw what appeared to be a uh, shadow from one of the seats in the theater. It definitely looked like an outline of a person that just got up quick and took off. Is that you? Are you with us? Do you want to sit down and talk with us? A guy named Henry Gong. Are you still here with us? We are going to have to leave soon. Okay. 
I think it's time to move on. Okay, sounds good. And I can't wait to get to analysis to see if we can make some sense out of this. So these are the tunnels mm -hmm. where this apparition soldier was said to appear to a woman when her husband was delayed in the prison. I think that would freak me out a little bit. Chris and I were doing some investigating in the tunnel and dungeon area within San Cristobal. There were reports of this Spanish soldier being seen who walked right up to the eyewitness before turning into the wall. Hola. Donde estas? Hablas ingles? Hello? Is there something behind me? I came from the cell. Is that a uh, whisper coming from in here? Female, right? Yeah, I would agree. Chris and I started to hear this whispering come maybe four or five feet from the position we were standing in, facing the dungeon. Unfortunately, time is against us, but if you would like us to stay, we can stay some more. I think by now you know that we mean you no harm. If you want us to stay, we need you to do something for us. We need you to throw a stone or move an object. Maybe even swing the bars of the prison door closed. Okay, well, we have to leave then. Any EVP session. Chris and I were running an EVP session to see if we could get any type of response. We don't know how successful we were, of course, until we go back to the analysis. This is the soldiers' barracks. Their claims in here is that uh, a woman was in here, and uh, all of a sudden she got this overwhelming feeling. All the hairs on her neck stood on end, but she had a camera with her, and she immediately started taking pictures, and then, lo and behold, there's orbs. Um, pictures? Yeah, you want to take some in here? Flash. No object? I haven't seen them in here yet. This is a, a concrete floor with all kinds of dust and debris on it. Well, if you're a brisk walker and walking here fast, I'm gonna shuffle my feet over there, turn around, take some. We were trying to debunk the orbs, you know, what, what could it be? Is it paranormal or is it just normal dust? Is there anyone here with us? Clash. Yeah, it created orbs. Did it? Yep. They're all over the place. We were pretty confident that we explained away the claims of orbs in the, the soldier barracks due to the fact that we stimulated the atmosphere and generated enough dust to actually have orbs register on film. Something plausible. All right, let's go on out. Okay, folks, if you can hear me over at San Cristobal, let's get everything packed up and ready to go. We just finished our investigation of El Moro and San Cristobal. I know the team has a lot of video and audio to go through since we're dealing basically with two locations. So I'm looking forward to seeing what might come out of it. We're just about to go into analysis for El Moro and the San Cristobal fortresses. We're right next to the sea, which obviously has the waves hidden the rocks on one side, and we have the town on the other. And so we're going to have to obviously pay a lot of attention to that in order to try and extract these potential EVPs or spirit voices. Paul, I'm doing research in the lighthouse. Uh -huh. I found out that the lighthouse that's there now at El Moro is the third lighthouse built on the fortress. Okay. I've been going through the pictures of the previous lighthouses that were there. Mm -hmm. Now, the one that captures my attention the most was the one that was built in 1876. There's an opening into the lighthouse at uh -huh. the same exact location where the woman saw the apparition walk into. I think this actually supports uh, Debbie's claim that this person actually saw what should they believe to be a residual walking into the wall. Right. Fantastic. Excellent, yeah. Susan. That's exactly what I needed to find out. Thank you. Cool. Hey, guys. Joe, you and I were investigating in El Moro. We got something nice. Cool. So if Let's you guys want to take a listen yeah. to yeah. it. Yeah, I'd like to hear it. Wow. Something's definitely trying to catch your attention. Definitely. Hey, Debbie. Welcome again. Bienvenida. 
Thank you. And how was everything? Talk to me. I just want to listen to all these adventures you guys went through. What did you find? There was a lot of things happening, and I have to say that a lot of the teams were having some unusual experiences. Before we get into what we actually found, we wanted to look at the evidence that was brought to you here at the fortress. We want you to take a look at this particular picture. This was the picture taken by the lady who felt the presence go through her. She circled where these orbs had appeared. We see this phenomenon happen quite regularly because this is a picture that we took as well. So what we see here, Debbie, is a phenomenon known as orb photography. Basically, the dust or even moisture in the air is reflecting the light from the flash. So that is not a ghost. I'm no. afraid not. During the investigation, Joe and Scott were investigating the third level over at El Moro when they got a voice that came through. A voice. A voice. You ready for it? Yes. It's not in Spanish. A little bit of English that I that I know. Ham or dam. That's what we were hearing as well. We were hearing the ham or the dam. Dam. So what we have next was caught by Paul and Susan in the tunnel area. What does it sound like to you? It could be a laugh. To us, it sounded like someone who was laughing. What we're about to show you next and explain actually backs up the claims of the eyewitness who's seen it. Now, this is taken with one of our full spectrum cameras. During the tour, you had told us that this person was seen going through that wall. Yes. But we started to dig into some of the research that shows us this is the previous lighthouse. Now, as you see here, mm. where the guy is seen to walk through the wall, yes. the previous lighthouse had the archway that he was able to walk into. This supports the claims of the eyewitness because what she's describing to us is a residual haunt. And the lady did not know how the lighthouse looked years ago. Exactly. Now we're left with, with the understanding that, uh, that the fortresses are showing signs of paranormal activity. Our conclusion is that it's perfectly safe for people to come here and, of course, work here. I thank you for investigating both fortresses that are very important in the history of Puerto Rico. Our visitors could be at ease. Well, it has been a great pleasure for us, Debbie. It has been fantastic, and thank you once again. Thank you for coming. Okay. Thank you for Have fun us. next time. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. I'm very happy. The investigation was very fruitful, and I will tell and share my findings with the people who told me the experiences. Well, I think that it's a unique experience for us because it, it's pretty rare on occasions that we're actually able to bring forward research that supports the claims yeah, of the client. True. So that, that was a good outcome. I was very, very happy with that. Mm -hmm. Let's get back and pick up the team and get ready for our next investigation. Here we are in Old San Juan, Puerto Rico. Part of GHI's mission is to connect with the paranormal groups from around the world. Chris and I are going to meet up with a local investigator, Bruce Antero, who's going to tell us about a local case his group has heard about, the Tapia Theatre. Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, guys. We're led to believe that you've got a case down here for us. Yes, we do here. I mean, uh, we got a Teatro Tapia. It's one of the most haunted places here in Old San Juan. I mean, the employees who've been working there have here footsteps, um, operations, orbs. Is there any death or tragedies connected to the theater? Well, before it used to be a theater, um, that place used to be a place where they used to hang people right. back in the 1700s. So that might be connected to what's going on in the theater. So who is it, Bruce, that we're, we're actually meeting at the theater? You're going to be meeting Luna. Um, okay. She's the person in charge of the theater. Hello. Hello. Hi. You. How are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you, too. Welcome to the Tapia Theater. This uh, theater was originally built in the 1800s, and around 1937, it was uh, renamed after a famous right. playwright, okay. Alejandro Tapia y Rivera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we're, we're told that, along with the great history of this location, that there's some unusual paranormal phenomenon occurring here as well. Yeah, that's right, and that's why I am very glad that you decided to come here, mm -hmm. and I should start by giving you a tour of, on the place. Would you like that? Sure. That would be fantastic. Okay, let's Please. Go uh, we can go to the mezzanine. Great. So we're here at the um, third floor, mm -hmm. and there's a very interesting story here. There's uh, this employee that was, uh, he was using um, a ladder, so mm -hmm. he was changing some of the light bulbs. 
Then he saw this uh, man standing right beside him. Mm -hmm. Then he turned his head and he wasn't there. He was kind of uh, spooked, but yes. anyway, he started, he continued working, and then after a while, he felt someone that was uh, holding him, mm -hmm. tugging from uh, his leg, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then he just went out and started running, and <laughs> <laughs> actually, I think he quit his job, and he never wow. came back. He was so spooked by that. I was working as an usher in the third floor, and I heard, like, excuse me, excuse me, like, someone needed to ask me something, and I go back, and I didn't see anything. There was nobody. So um, we're underneath uh, the main stage, mm -hmm. and uh, this is the workshop. Some employees have claimed that they see um, shadow figures walking around. Mm -hmm. And once they say those uh, uh, half doors there, they opened and closed, just mm -hmm. as if someone was coming in or going out. The doors are pushed. We think that someone's trying to get out. We look around, there's actually no one to be seen. Well, this is a stage, and this is where one of the most interesting stories uh, is developed. They uh, say that there's this lady that was performing, then that she fell down and she died. Mm -hmm. And that ever since that day, they have been uh, hearing people singing on stage and mm -hmm. footsteps and everything. They come around, and, and there's no one on stage. Well, we will get started, and we will have you answers in a few days. Great. Thank Great. you. I love these sorts of locations. Uh, they're not huge, but they are very spacious. But it does give us the opportunity to really cover things top to bottom with cameras um, and, and basically run the equipment in, in a nice enclosed space, um, giving us more chance to capture any sort of um, evidence of, of the paranormal. Too far. Go back, 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 back. Stop. Perfect. I think the biggest challenge for us is just going to you know, make sure to try to keep the sound down. It looks like it might only be one or two teams at a time, so we're definitely gonna have to keep in mind that we could be interfering with somebody else's investigation. Okay, so how's the setup going? Um, it actually is uh, ready to go. Good. What we have, um, the full spectrum camera uh, set up in the auditorium, as well as the fact we have the uh, second, third gen, as well as the thermal uh, set up underneath the stage. Then what we have here and here are the IR cameras set mm -hmm. up to actually watch the entire auditorium. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we also have is the stage area itself. This is a really, really good coverage of, of cameras. I'm very, very happy with that. Let's get the lights out and uh, get investigating. Careful stairs. Oops. Scott and I are investigating the uh, third floor mezzanine area where the client had told us that the man was repairing a light and had seen an apparition and then looked back and he was gone. And then having his leg pulled. I don't see anybody in the seats. What was that? I don't know. I heard that. I hear somebody. Do you like footsteps? Um, you hearing that? I keep hearing it. It sounds like it's behind you in that area. Yeah, it is. It's. I think it's kind of like right around here. That was a point seven. Is there anybody here? Don't be alarmed. My name is Joe. This is my friend Scott. Readings are high. Just. As a base, they're high. I think it's freaking out. Police in your Tapia, would you let us see you? Point six. Do you like to play practical jokes? You could scare one of us. If you scare me enough, I'll probably pee a little. <laughs> He's gonna EVP in his pants. Holy <laughs> What the was what? Okay, go, 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 go. Please, Senor Tapia, could you let us see you? Point six. Joe and I were investigating the third level of the Teatro Tapia. Joe is asking uh, someone play uh, if someone's here play a joke on us. And almost on cue, my hand was just totally lunged forward. Go, 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 Don't be afraid. Go. Something just totally pushed my arm. I'm like, holy, I'm shaking right now. It almost felt as if I was a mannequin, uh, uncontrollable uh, jolting of my hand forward, and I threw the millimeter on the floor. <laughs> you, did that thing flew out of your I hand? got pushed, and that's, look at Joe, look at my arms. Wow, you that, got goosebumps. I got goosebumps. Holy Can you do the same to me, wow, please? Wow, 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 wow. Are you still in here with us?
You hear that? There's sounds coming from up here. That's footsteps. Above us? This place is weird. It sounds like footsteps, then it sounds like dragging. Yeah. Is there anybody up there? I think up there is outside, isn't it? I don't know. I can't see through these grates. The sounds we heard, the footsteps and the dragging, was pretty interesting. And when something manipulated me and made me move, and that was a really, really uh, sobering experience. Let's have a look at this door. Barry and I headed down to the basement to investigate where people said they were seeing shadows. And Luna was telling us that one time the, the door down there opened by itself and closed, like somebody walked through it. Hmm. It opens in. Which, if it's not closed all the way, wind could definitely swing it, right? The doors opened in, so we thought maybe a good gust of air could open the doors. Okay, you can let me back in. So it can't be open from the outside? No. So that one remains a mystery. Let's go this way. Where the hell are you going? I don't know. What is that? What do you think? Check it out. We find this small tunnel system which runs underneath the theater. Right. I think I should have wore trousers. Yeah. And I should have wore sneakers. What? What? What did you just say? I said I should have wore sneakers. No, after that. I didn't say anything after that. Did you just hear something? Yes. It sounded like someone said something, but not in a nice way. There was an unusual audible tone that I found threatening. Why would they not even tell us about these chambers? I really doubt they have people wandering around in here very often. Though. I don't think so. There. Did you hear that? I definitely heard that. I heard that too. That was a voice. We heard this voice coming from deeper within the tunnel system itself. It seemed very clear, but we weren't able to pick out exactly what it was saying. Okay. Where does this go? I don't know. During the EVP session, I have to say, I did hear something that was very, very unusual. And it's quite possible that, uh, that the, the recording devices that we were using have picked up on that also. Let's get out of here. So this is the uh, this here under the stage. Paul and I went to investigate um, just beneath the stage area. There's actually several reports coming from down here, from shadows to footsteps. There's something about this room that feels off. I want to do a quick EMF sweep in here. Sure. If you are in this room with us, and you are amongst those shadows that have been reported, then could you please give us a sign of your presence? Oh, it's got 2.0. It, it just went away, though. Is it you that roams these halls, this theater. Wait a second. I'm getting 4.4. Are you trying to get our attention? Is it you who opened those doors? Look at this. I'm getting like 6.0. I was getting some really high readings from certain spots um, underneath the stage area. Now, if there is anybody in here who does wish to communicate with us, I need to speak very loudly and very clearly. Is there perhaps a message you wish for me to pass on? This is really interesting. There are really high EMF readings. And I'm really looking forward to going through all of our evidence.
Sarah and I went in to investigate the stage. People will hear singing from the stage. They'll hear footsteps. People said that there was this woman who was performing on stage who actually died there. Also, the reports of performers being able to see the shadows moving back and forward. Now, during our investigation on the stage, Chris and I started to take some full-spectrum pictures. Did you hear that? Coming from over here? Yeah. Oh. What? I thought I just saw something there. Where? On the second level. Okay. You know when they talk about these the shadows? Yeah. That's what I saw. You see that little, little cubicle there? Now, it wasn't in it. Yeah. It was out from it. Beyond the balcony? Yeah. Whoa. Did you see that? It looked like there was movement over to the left. I just thought I saw that again. It's kind of weird. I'm curious now, look. Not seeing anything on the camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This unusual shadow happened a second time in the same location. Uh, so both of us went up to investigate. I think I've seen you twice already. Barry. I heard something. Movement. What's that? Did you see that? I thought somebody was standing there for a second. There's something down there, I see. Behind the uh, DVR camera, white. Bottom right corner? Bottom or left? left. Mm -hmm. Not seeing anything on the camera. We did hear a noise. It wasn't too long after that, that Barry started seeing some sort of light in the back corner and some sort of shadow play or movement. Not sure what it was. Can't explain it. I'm just hoping the camera may have caught it. I have hijacked Barry's walkie, and I think we're going to call it a night. It has been a really interesting investigation. I have to say, a lot of experiences. And I believe that a lot of these experiences have been passed on to the equipment. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what the analysis really unfolds. We're just about to enter analysis for the Tapia Theatre. Now, there's a lot of stuff that was actually happening um, last night. With all the amount of equipment we were using, I think we got a good chance of capturing something. Hey, guys. Take a listen to this audio clip. This is Barry and Chris in the basement, and this is them leaving the tunnels, and I think I captured something that sounds like a voice, but I want to get your opinion sure. on it. I can hear... Very breathy, right? A, a breathy, let me go. I think Barry's going to like that one. All right, let's see what else we can find. OK. Hey, guys. I'm actually looking um, in the basement. You know, we set up that full-spectrum camera. People are reporting seeing shadows. Check this out. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> what is that? Okay, so welcome back. I'm really looking forward to um, whatever you discovered. <laughs> well, I have to say that uh, the theater kept us on our toes. At one point, Barry and I were investigating in the basement, and um, we ended up finding this little tunnel, and we weren't in there very long, and we started hearing what sounded like voices. But we were able to catch what sounds like a voice on our audio. Okay. Like, yeah, you can hear help. Mm -hmm. That's what some of the team were believing as well. We heard voices a few times. Um, and lucky enough, we were able to catch what we think is a second voice on one of our recorders. Uh, yes, I kind of uh, understood let me, but I couldn't make out the last word. That's kind of where we were stuck, because some of us just heard the let me, some of us heard let me out. And the interesting part for us is that the help was taken seconds before this, oh, wow. so it was help let me out. Wow, it's really impressive. That is pretty cool. 
Scott and Joe, two of our investigators, they were investigating up on the third level. And Scott said that all he felt was his arm just thrust forward for no reason, and he couldn't understand what would do that to his arm, to physically jerk his arm like that. Wow. And then they started hearing footsteps going across the roof. And shortly after the footsteps stopped, they heard what sounded like somebody dragging something heavy across the roof. Across the roof? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Sounds like there's somebody walking on, on, on top of us. You hear that? That's a footstep. That's in the ceiling. Wow. The drag. Somebody's dragging something. Wow. So you can hear the steps and then dragging. That's right. Mm -hmm. Barry and I went up and checked the roof to make sure nobody was up there. Paul and Susan walked around the building to make sure there was no other way up there or off of yeah, it. Yeah, there's no way anyone can get up there. There, there was not. And there was nothing up there either mm -hmm. to drag across the roof. It was very, very bizarre that, that they should be hearing these footsteps and this dragging sound. <laughs> well, I, it's, a, it's a confirmation that these things are really happening. Mm -hmm. So it's not a coincidence. Uh, we have some video footage to show you that was recorded down in the basement. Now what we have is two cameras, a low lux camera. This camera is designed to capture shadow. And also to the right, we have a thermal imaging camera. Both cameras are side by side, looking at the same perspective. Okay. You will see little boxes appear. Mm -hmm. That tracks movement. Um, and the camera is seeing something move, but it's having a problem in trying to capture that movement. Whatever this is, passes by the camera extremely fast. It operates much the same as our own eyes then, um, because we can't see 30 frames per second. To us, it's a blur. And most of the shadows that we see tend to be blur. And this is probably pretty common with the whole shadow theory. Of course, they move so fast. One of the cameras, the thermal imaging camera, which was running beside it, um, captured this image as it passed by. It's very fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what we're doing now, Luna, is showing you the piece on slow frame. We can see the edges of the corridor here in this thermal imaging. As this, whatever this is, comes into frame, we can almost see through it and see the lines continued. And, uh, and it moved, of course, so fast. Um, we can see that our camera was having serious problems trying to keep up with that type of movement. In wrap-up, I have to say the theater has lived up to its reputation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, we're left, That's of course, with the fact that we believe that the theater truly is haunted. So it's good to know, finally, have some proof about it. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Not in a, in a menacing way. Great, so there's really nothing to worry about. Not at all. Great, thank you for coming, and please come back and have a vacation. <laughs> thank you, we would love it. Well, I'm very glad that GHI came to San Juan and investigated the claims here at the Tapia Theater. And I was um, very surprised by the amount of information they were able to record. And the video that was shot on the basement proves what the people were saying, that they are seeing shadows over there. I wouldn't try to go to the basement without the lights on, that's for sure. I thought Tapia Theater was a great end to season two. It really was. It really was. There's so much evidence that came out of that place. I was really impressed with it. I just wonder where we're going next. I think it should be another place with beaches and palm trees. <laughs>